G'day everyone, welcome to this weekend uh, general update for what's going on in the market and uh, the party that's been uh, running for pretty much all this year continues to roll on. The S&P went to new all-time highs and we're seeing a lot more speculative activity coming into the market of late. So uh, if anything, the, uh, the pace of the party is actually picking up and it's certainly a lot of fun at the moment. Because of that, uh, and also the way that gold has gone in the last uh, week or so, I'm going to start with uh, a look at gold, and uh, which pose the question, is gold finally about to go up? We've seen some uh, tentative positive signs several times over the last four or five months, and, and every time gold slipped back down again. But it's showing more positive signs again, and uh, and I think it's probably just on the cusp of uh, about to break out but let's put things in perspective first of all if we look at it on the biggest picture level which is what's called a, a secular level so they're the long-term trends that run for uh, 5 10 15 20 years we're in a secular bull market that started in 2001 so we're 12 years into this secular bull market and that is still very much the case and my view is not only from a fundamental point of view but from a technical point of view that the most explosive leg in the gold bull market is yet to come now within that overall secular bull market we've been in a cyclical bear market so the cycles are shorter than the than the, the speculative runs secular runs so we're in a cyclical bear market that started when the price peaked out in September 2011 at just over $1,900 so that's actually been in progress now for uh, slightly over two years and as we'll see the level at 1550 was an absolutely vital support level that broke in April and when it did gold fell $200 an ounce so that was a key support level and that brought in a huge amount of technical selling once you get that level of technical selling the whole psychology of the market has changed and so since then gold has been uh, trying to form a base and you've got to remember that a basing pattern is not an event that occurs over a short period of time it's a lengthy process can take up to a year or even 18 months for a long-term base to be put in place and uh, you know that's been going now for um, for about four or five months since uh, April and this basing process may be complete we've been looking over recent weeks at this downtrending channel we'll have a look at that in just a minute and uh, that the price is now broken out of that downtrending channel we closed above 1340 which is the the initial level that I've talked about it's not confirmation but it's at least the first uh, tick in the right direction so let's take a look at gold so let's pan back let's pan right back and you can see this is the the bull market in gold that's been running now since 2001 peaked out here in September of 2011 just a tick under the $2,000 an ounce and you can see came down and tested this important level at 1550 once twice three times four five six there's a whole lot of them there seven eight so there was about eight levels or eight times that gold tested that support level then when it finally broke you can see in the space of two days gold just completely fell apart got absolutely smashed it brought in so much selling now since then which is the 15th of April we've been forming this base had a couple of promising moves but we've now formed a higher high and you can see that we had this downtrending channel and we've now moved out of that channel now you can also see the red line is the 150 day moving average um, I'll just take these Bollinger Bands off just to make it a little bit clearer so we've got the 150 day moving average and since the um, since the price really started uh, getting into this cyclical bear market you can see it's been well below the 150 day moving average for a, a long period of time now that average is still heading down 
but the price is now coming back up to it a second time so we've got a downtrending channel we've finally broken out of it in the last uh, five or six days and we've moved above this high here of late September so that's the first flag that we may be getting a, uh, a more of a move to the upside ultimately we need it to close above 1440 that will be more of a test and by that stage the price will be back above the 150 day moving average and I think that would probably pretty much clinch it for me in terms of uh, this being a the start of the, the, the final and most explosive leg in gold but as I've indicated I think we'll probably see gold stocks move first that's normally what happens so let's have a look at the GDX index now you can see I've got two moving averages here one is the in in the red is uh, sorry in the purple is the 150 day moving average and the one in the red is the 50 day now you can see they crossed in January of this year and they've been wide apart indicating very strong momentum but you can see they're getting very close together again now so wouldn't be surprised to see the GDX index start to move up now if it can close above around 30 31 dollars then I think we're off to the races and that would be the signal that gold stocks are underway a close above 31 and also that um, that we're into the next phase in gold as well so confirmation a close above 1440 so that's what's to look for in uh, in gold and gold stocks pretty exciting time I think coming up let's now look at the S&P rose another 15 points on the week and uh, it's up 22 percent this year which when you think about it that's a big rise for an index the bond market is telling us that there'll be no changes to Fed policy so the bond market's still pretty calm and orderly interest rates still very low and it's really the bond market which is a far more professional market than the stock market it's uh, it's traded by the real professionals of the industry and, and that they're, they're not expecting any change to Fed policy and that's going to be very positive for stocks now the S&P index though is short-term overboard um, so expect to see some uh, some weakness a bit a bit of a pullback at least a pause in the next few weeks it can't just keep going up in a straight line but putting that aside I still think we'll see some continued strength into January so I'm still very positive on the S&P but a bit wary in over the next couple of weeks now there are some concerns yes um, there's any number of people that are highlighting all the problems in the world but that's always the case you can always find something to worry about but in terms of disasters to my mind absolutely not I don't think there's any concerns of a major correction in the stock market uh, there's many many indicators that I look at here's just one of them uh, Greek bonds if you think back a couple of years ago they were the riskiest bonds in the world um, Greek bonds for uh, six months and 12 months were paying in excess of 100% interest because people were convinced that they were going to lose their capital uh, and yet let's have a look at what's happened to Greek bond yields so you can see the enormous peak that they got to this is the 10-year yield they got to an enormous peak in 2012 at uh, almost 40 percent and now they're down under 10 percent so there's been a, uh, a huge reduction in the risk premium associated with Greek bonds and if you think back just a couple of years everyone was completely convinced that uh, Greece would default and that that would trigger an enormous financial collapse it didn't happen and all of that heat has come out of the uh, the Greek bond market now so that's really telling you how the professionals are seeing things they're not concerned anymore now the ASX 200 rose 65 points on the week it was 90 odd points the week before that so it's had a pretty strong run banks have been terrific um, but gee they just continue to look fully valued in Australia uh, what I am seeing though is an increasing number of breakouts in speculative stocks again which is an indicator that um, 
there's a, a lot of confidence coming back into the market that people are now starting to, to punt the, um, the more speculative stocks as well. And many of the high quality stocks are fully valued to overvalued. So you just need to be careful at the moment. So let's take a look at the Aussie index. So you can see here we, uh, we had a bit of a pullback which finished in early October and since then the market has risen uh, by nearly 300 points. It's been a very strong rise and if we have a look at the banking index that's been by far the strongest but if we just have a look at the materials they've done okay as, as well. They're certainly starting to head back up in the, in the right direction. So uh, I ignore that gold didn't rise by 44. Sorry, that's just ignore that. Now copper um, steady at three dollars twenty six on the week, uh, and oil, which was really under pressure, dipped down uh, well under the hundred dollar mark. Uh, managed to climb back up to uh, to ninety seven dollars. So oil certainly under a bit of pressure. There's a lot more oil being released into the uh, the world market. And that's keeping downward pressure on uh, on oil. There's the, uh, the the chart for spot copper. It's still just in this 320 to 320 uh, 330 mark. No real change there. So from an overall strategy point of view, um, as I said earlier, the speculative part of the market in Australia it's really starting to roll. Um, but this is high risk, so you need to be highly selective and you need to be very clear on your trading plan. Um, don't go wandering into this on an ad hoc basis. You'll um, you'll almost certainly lose money. You need to be very clear about what you're doing. You need to be highly selective, and uh, and you need to execute a, a well thought out game plan um, pretty closely. Uh, something that I'm uh, I'm doing, and I'm um, I'm happy to share that with anyone that's interested in uh, in coming into that area with me. Now, as I said, expect a pullback in the next few weeks. So I think that's uh, that would not only be likely, it would also be very healthy for the market because there's not a lot of value out there at the moment. It's a lot of great stocks, um, but they're, they're just not fundamentally or technically at an attractive point. So that'd be a great setup point. So if anyone wants any more information, any non-members, obviously the members are getting uh, an absolute flood of information every day on recommendations on what to buy and sell and it's, uh, it's been a good period. But for any non-members watching this video that, uh, that like to explore some other options in the market, um, please get in touch with me. That's my email address. Um, happy to ch chat with you and um, talk to you again next week. Cheers.